Hi, welcome back to the Effective Alternative Punishments online e-course. Today we're going to talk about the seventh, the final Effective Alternative Punishment. And this one has to do with how we communicate to our children. Okay, it's by using connective communication. And I know I talked about this in a previous video on setting limits. And the key to setting kind limits is in using this type of connective communication. Connective communication is like the secret to influencing children. If you know how to do it, it's really a technique that can almost hypnotize your children to cooperate with you. So you need to use it, remember, for good. And you will instinctively and inherently use it for the good of your child because by the very nature of using connective communication, it's going to meet their deeper fundamental needs for connection, for attention, for encouragement, for information, and all their emotional and psychological needs will get met while you communicate information or communicate limits or communicate the next steps or any type of communication you give with your child, you'll be able to influence them, to inspire their cooperation, to win their desire to work with you, their desire to share and to be naturally generous and helpful in the way they relate to you and to anyone else in your environment. Connective communication is a powerful skill. I have an entire chapter of that in my book, Democratic Parenting, so I highly recommend you read that chapter as well. Also, I have a webinar, webinar on connective communication that's called uh, Child Defiance Webinar, how to use connective communication to win their approval and their cooperation. Okay, so in order to overcome child defiance, using connective communication is a powerful way. And there's certain important points that make connective communication effective. One are the words that you use, the choice of words, okay, is to use positive, encouraging types of words rather than negative words that, that say, and, and rather than saying no too many times, you can use alternatives to say no in order to get them to cooperate with you. Another type of word that you can use is the words that get them to feel like they're part of the family. And this meets their need for contribution and participation. So by saying things like we, like us, like let's, rather than you, or um, uh, basically just pointing the finger and saying you, you, you shouldn't do that and you shouldn't do this, rather than saying that like that, you can say we behave like this and we're going to do this and instead let's approach it this way. Okay, by using this type of we, by us language, okay, it makes them feel part, like they're a part of the unit. It meets their need for connection and contribution and participation. And that, that's something they'll want to protect. They feel like they belong to the family, that they're an integral part of it. So they're going to want to behave in a way that encourages that as well. Okay, and rather than saying no all the time, because children already hear no so much in their daily lives, we want to say alternatives to that. And perhaps you can say, uh, not right now, sweetie. Or you could say, that's a great idea, but instead, let's approach it like this. Okay, so that encourages them. Because oftentimes, children do have good ideas. Their, their intention for their idea was good, but they weren't thinking situationally. They weren't thinking, perhaps, of the time constraints or uh, other types of constraints or uh, details or situational um, circumstances that might make their idea uh, less positive, less co conducive to what they imagined, okay? But their, but their ability to think and come up with ideas is not something we want to suppress. By saying no all the time, that can discourage them to some degree, and it can make them feel like they don't have autonomy, and they will start to re resent that and uh, be more defiant and disobedient the more that you say no, the more that you inhibit their good ideas, okay, or not so good ideas. Instead, you could say, you could encourage their thinking, their idea forming capacity, and redirect them towards a positive solution, right? So you could say, oh, that's a great idea, sweetheart, but unfortunately, we don't have the time for that, so let's do that another day. Okay, uh, so these are ways that you can redirect them. You can encourage them. You can acknowledge them. It meets their needs for attention, uh, connection, encouragement, and information because you're telling them why this idea they can't uh, follow through on it right in this moment, right? So give them that information. Communicate to them in a connective way, the way that they feel connected. The other part, besides the words that you choose to use, 
is the tone of your voice, right? You can say the sweetest thing, but if it's said with a harsh tone, people are going to feel the harshness and not the tone. You can say the meanest thing, but if it's saying with a, with a, a soft, loving tone, people will be completely confused, right? But if you ever heard to someone, if someone has ever talk, spoken to you in a completely different language, you can often get the feeling of what they're trying to communicate to you through the tone in their voice, right? We can easily tell if someone who speaks a completely different language is saying um, mean or unkind things towards us or if they're really angry, right? We can tell by the tone of their voice and by their body language um, what, what they might be feeling. So we want to use a tone of voice that shows our children how much we love them, how much we're encouraging them, how much we desire to stay connected to them, how much we're rooting for them. We want them to feel like we're a part of their team, that, that we are their biggest fan, that we want them to succeed and find better solutions to whatever is going on uh, and, and to, for them to find better ways to behave. So this is a very powerful thing to do when we set limits, right? Because again, remember, we talked about setting limits and how children will naturally test their limits. And it's something we don't want to suppress the desire to, to test limits because that's how innovation happens by questioning and testing different limits. But around behavior, appropriate behavior, uh, there are limits where we don't want our children to go past. And we can set these firm limits um, by communicating them to, to the, communicating those limits to our children using this connective communication and by using a tone of voice that's kind, that shows our children that we're not going to, uh, to extract our love our, and our, um, our affection towards them, but we're not going to put up with any type of uh, inappropriate behavior that's just, that we're, we just can't allow that, right? We want to show them respectful and loving behavior. And we're gonna model that in how we communicate to them with the tone of the voice we use and the body language we use, okay? So we wanna use a tone of voice that shows them how much we love them. Also, eye contact. By showing in our eyes, we can communicate so much in our eyes. We wanna show them a type of love, a type of respect, a type of belief in our children that make them feel encouraged and inspired that, and we want to show them that, that we, we know and believe that they can accomplish anything that they want and that they're really kind and generous and, and wonderful, beautiful people, right? And if they see that in their eyes, they're going to love that and they're going to want to maintain that and they're going to work and behave in a way in order to, to encourage that themselves, right? It's, they, they, the children want to have your approval. They want to have your admiration, right? I've said this before and I'll say it again is that if we give that to children, it's almost like a drug. They want more of it, right? But if we extract that, if we're always taking away that love, that approval, that admiration, that acknowledgement when they do something and they misbehave, that's a form of punishment. To take away your approval or to not give them attention or to, to be given the silent treatment or for, to just disconnect from them or to ignore them because they did something that we're unhappy with, that is a form of punishment. And children don't want that. And then, yes, they might start to, or to change their behavior to avoid that, but then their cortisol levels, the stress hormone levels will be through the roof because they're always going to be slightly anxious that they're going to do something inappropriate in a way that's going to cause them to be punished because you're going to withdraw your approval and your attention from them and be silently angry or ignore them or verbally and vocally punish them or scold them, right? Which is the other type of punishment. And children don't want that either. And yes, that can get short-term results, but as I mentioned before, it's gonna have long-term negative effects of, um, of causing them to, to be in a continual stress reaction. They're gonna always be nervous, always on edge, because, and they're gonna be behaving out of fear rather than love and rather than understanding the needs of the situation, rather than being able to respond generously and effectively by understanding the situational needs, by having the information and the knowledge that can help them make good decisions in the future, they're going to just be uh, reacting and responding out of fear, out of what to avoid, okay? Avoid the punishments and threats uh, without really understanding the deeper needs and the reasons why they should be behaving in better ways. Okay, so by using connective communication, we can relay the information they need in order to understand why certain responses or certain behaviors are better than others and how reacting in certain ways or different solutions can lead to everybody having their needs met rather than them. 
and they will learn that also they get their needs met at the same time because you're staying connected to them. You're giving them attention still, right? They feel encouraged and they feel um, that they're getting the attention that they, the, the information that they might need as well. So connective communication, very powerful way. Four key parts to it, right? The, the words you choose, your eye contact, your body language overall, and the tone of your voice. Now with your body language also, sometimes you might have to go down on one knee to meet them face to face, you know, or adjust your body language in a way that shows that you're open, that you're loving, that you're understanding, that you're compassionate, that you're empathetic to them, right? These are all basically different ways to enhance the connection or to reach through disconnection. If a child is feeling disconnected, then we wanna try and reach through that, that disconnection through using connective communication. Just using the example I showed in a previous video about asking a question, right? If a child's very disconnected, we can use connective communication with our tone of voice, our eye contact, our body language, and the words that we choose, Different. that's all a part of connective communication, and ask a question to help reach through that disconnect, to, to melt some of that resistance some of that, that shielding the child might have because of some unprocessed hurt has caused them to disconnect from uh, people around them or from their, their environment, and therefore they're not behaving in appropriate ways because their judgment is clouded because they're so disconnected to the world around them. We wanna reach through that disconnect and pull them out of that state so that they can reconnect to the world around them. We can do that through using uh, the connective communication techniques. So study it, uh, you can watch the webinar I did on it, on the child defiance and connective communication, read about it in my book, Democratic Parenting, and also uh, you can take the uh, child influencing course as well on the website at um, the parentlearningclub.com. It teaches some of the more deeper aspects of connective communication and will really help you enhance this skill. Because remember, these are all skills, all these seven effective alternatives to punishments from the very beginning of deciding that you're no longer gonna use punishments and to understanding the root causes and the needs and intervening with setting limits, uh, doing family meetings, asking questions, using connective communications. These are all skills and like any skill, it takes time to master. Be patient with yourself as you start to learn these, as you start to use them. And just remember first and foremost, your commitment and your intention to not use punishments and threats. And you don't have to. I'm telling you, I've experienced myself, I never have to use threats and punishments anymore with my child or with any other children I work with because I can establish the respect, the trust, the rapport, and the cooperation by using the techniques I've shared with you in these videos. But it does take time, especially if one child is so used to being disciplined in different ways, it takes time to untrain them. Not too much time though, that's the wonderful thing about children. They're incredibly adaptable and they're incredibly buoyant. They can change and transform very quickly. And they don't want to be threatened. They don't want to be punishment. They don't want to be punished. So they're much more responsive to these positive, non-punitive ways to connect with them, to communicate with them, to teach them appropriate ways to behave. And once they get a taste of your approval, of your of your, um, your admiration, of your acknowledgement, of your attention, of the respect that you show them, they're gonna want more of that. So they're gonna behave more and more in positive and, and positive reinforcing ways in order to maintain that connection with you. And as you encourage that through these different methods I've talked to you, it just builds that respect, it builds that rapport, and that will last a lifetime with your child. You'll have a lifetime of influence, of positive connection that can save them from making all kinds of bad decisions that can lead them to suffer at all different types of, types of levels later on. So it's well worth the effort to invest in yourself, invest in your child, invest in your family by learning these skills, by practicing these skills. So what I recommend finally is to watch these videos again. Watch the other webinars, read my books, go to any other websites or any other, read any other types of books that teach similar information as a way to inspire you, to keep you focused and on track to using non-punitive discipline methods to get your children to behave more appropriately, to get them to listen and to pay attention to you better. And there's many ways to do it. Go stay connected to the Parent Learning Club and uh, read the newsletters, the email newsletters, 
take some of the other online courses we offer or, or the webinars that we offer, and this will keep you motivated and inspired as you learn this new type of way to parent your child. Remember, every single day, give your child all your love. At the end of our life, we'll look back and we'll see that our life is actually quite short. And the truth is, we don't know when our life will end. And sadly to say, as many parents who have uh, suffered the unimaginable tragedy of losing a child will tell you, is that you'll never expect even your, your child to go away before you do, but it can happen. And I'm not saying this to put a big downer on your day, but just to highlight the precious gift that life is. We have to acknowledge the reality that is facing all of us at the end of our life, that the life will end one day. And that gives our life meaning. So remember every single day to give your child all your love. And you have to give yourself that same love too to fill up your own emotional cup, to be there for your child, to give them that full attention, to be patient enough to practice these skills I've talked about. And by doing so, we can all build a brighter future for our children, for our grandchildren, and for all the children in the world. Thank you.